What is going on you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven and today is the day by far the highest viewed video on my channel with over 300,000 views by a long shot has been the comparison of the Razer Wolverine Ultimate and the Microsoft Microsoft Elite 1 and 2. What happened to your custom Elite 1 Kevin? Hmm. Alright, so first of all, we got to get this out of the way. No, my Elite 1 did not break. A year and a half of faithful service. Pretty heavy gameplay on both the PC and the Xbox One. It was still plugging away. I actually ended up selling it and uh, getting back pretty much the investment that I spent on the controller itself and then obviously the modifications. So, not bad. Not bad at all. And I also cut the dude a pretty good deal. I knocked off about 20 bucks, so he felt like he got a really good value and obviously I, I wasn't playing with it anymore. And it was time for me to rotate my stock of custom controllers. As you guys know, I have a small business building custom controllers. Pictures on screen here. Uh, also, at the, on this channel, I have tested literally dozens of premium controllers. AIM, Battle Beaver, Scuff, Razer, Elite 1 and 2, Power Ray Fusion, Astro C40, Nacon Revolution. Just to name a few. So if you guys are into controller comparisons and in-depth reviews, this is definitely the channel for you guys. So you might want to consider subscribing if that kind of content does tickle your fancy. So now that all these quality control issues have kind of risen up, I got a ton of comments in the section below saying that, you know, people's controllers were shitting out on them. They were getting stick drift, face buttons uh, jamming up, um, bumpers breaking, just unacceptable quality for a $150 controller. Or the Elite 2 is closer to 200 with dealer markups because they're actually really hard to get a hold of now. Um, they didn't make a very big batch, an initial batch, so they're pretty much sold out everywhere. So when you can get a hang a hold of them, they're actually kind of expensive. But anyway, so just jumping right into it, we're going to start off with the uh, packaging. So obviously both boxes looked extremely premium. I'll have a uh, B-roll playing here of the initial review for each of these controllers. I've also done re-reviews or updated reviews of each one once I got my production value of my channel up a little bit and also gained more knowledge about the controllers and had more information to put into the review. So uh, packaging is very premium. You would expect nothing less. When you get a premium controller, you're getting premium accessories, packaging, as well as the experience, you know? Know, they try and make it an experience it's about marketing and whatnot so um yeah they both look great you do get a soft carrying case with each one which is very nice i don't really know who actually uses the soft carrying case i just when you have a controller that pretty like that you spend a lot of money on you're probably going to want it out on display so sitting out next to your pc or your console uh where it's quickly easily grabbable and you know yeah but uh, i will say that the carrying case for the original elite is really nothing special. Same thing with the Wolverine, it holds your accessories in there. However, with the Elite 2, it actually does work as a dock to charge your controller from the inside. They have some micro suede on there that feels really premium. Uh, so honestly, I would say the Elite 2 has the best carrying case because of, well, it does something besides hold your controller, you can charge in there. Um, and then, you know, the Elite 1 and the Wolverine, I mean, it's just a carrying case. You know, I'm not going to even count the points for that because a lot of people don't even give a shit. They'll just put it up in their closet and never touch it again. So as for ergonomics, how it feels in your hand, they both use the same shell or body shape as the regular licensed Microsoft Xbox controller, which is a good thing. That controller is virtually perfect uh, when it comes to ergonomics. I think it fits in the hand phenomenally for most average size hands. So, I mean, they're both a 10 out of 10 for ergonomics. They feel great. None of the accessories really uh, tamper with anything. However... Uh, when we get into paddles, which does affect the ergonomics technically, I'm just going off the shell shape right now, but when we get into paddles, uh, the Wolverine kicks the shit out of the Elite. Buzz for build quality and long-term reliability. I did the stress test where, you know, I kind of try and bend the controller in my, in my hand. I, I knock on it to listen to the hollowness of that cheap PVC plastic from China and whatnot. Honestly, they both felt very durable. They both felt very premium, high quality. However, uh, there's been little to no long-term complaints from people saying that the Razer controllers have shit out on them. And there have been thousands, thousands and thousands for the Elite 1 and 2, which is crazy that they didn't fix these quality control issues at the factory when they dropped the Elite 2. They packed in all these new really cool features, you know, three-way trigger stops, adjustable thumbstick sensitivities, uh, better paddle design, uh, yada yada, etc. Three onboard profiles instead of two, but they couldn't fix the thing that really matters, which is, is it going to break in your hand after a couple months of play? And some people were even getting them out of the box completely unusable, so that's shitty. 
So because of that, I'm gonna give a 10 out of 10 to Razer. They have zero quality control issues. And then on the, uh, the Xbox side, I'm gonna give them a four out of 10. I'm not giving them a one because people like myself that did get lucky, I used the hell out of that controller. It's not like I was baby and then I was playing with it just like I would any other controller. And I never had any issues. Year and a half of play with the Elite One. Um, maybe I just got a good batch. Maybe I just got lucky. I don't know. Now moving on to the included accessories. I've got to go ahead and give this to the Elite. They come with six swappable thumbsticks uh, on both the Elite 1 and 2. The Razer only comes with two. You do also have uh, two different D-pads for all these models. However, the wheel D-pad, uh, yeah, the wheel D-pad that comes with the Elite 1 and 2, I think not only looks cooler, but it's actually more usable for things like fighting games where you want to do roll-on combos and shit like that. So, uh, between that and, you know, just all the other accessories that come with there, the braided cable. Um, I don't really like the breakaway design that's on the Razer controllers. It's just a standard 10 foot, uh, colored cable that comes on the Elite, which I thought was really cool. They kind of color matched it with the white. Uh, it's kind of a brush silver. I think it looked really cool. And I really, really love the feeling of the dome sticks that come with the Elite. So I've got to give the, uh, accessories over here, the included accessories to the Elite 1 and 2. Now moving on to the analog sticks, obviously the Elite One felt virtually the same as a regular Xbox controller. However, you do have six adjustable, uh, or not adjustable, six replaceable magnetized thumbsticks, which is really cool. You do have four on the Razer Wolverine. And then with the Elite Two, you still have six uh, different thumbsticks, but you get a little tool and you can actually adjust, uh, adjust the thumbstick sensitivity from three different modes uh, and the aggressive one is actually very noticeable. I kept the left analog stick which is just for movement uh, at its lightest sensitivity setting and then kept the right at its most aggressive or most resistant level for aiming and damn it, it felt really good so you know I gotta give it to the Elite 2 then the Elite 1 then the Razer Wolverine Ultimate. Next, the face buttons. I absolutely love the face buttons on the Razer controllers, all of them. The Raiju for PS4, the uh, Wolverine Tournament, the Ultimate. Those are the only three that I've tested from Razer. I'm assuming maybe some of their other controllers might have this as well, but they have mechanical switches. Yes, just like a gaming keyboard or gaming mouse. Uh, actual mechanical tactile click switches, which aren't very loud, so they won't interrupt your chat or your stream, but they feel so good. I wish every premium controller included these. They give you such a good resistance, a light tactile click. It's very satisfying. And then a perfect rebound. Like they are the perfect uh, face buttons by far, which kind of sucks because they have really good paddles too. So you're going to be using those and not really touching the face buttons that often. But if you do use them, oh, they feel buttery smooth. So, and the face buttons on the uh, Xbox Elite 1 and 2 are literally the exact same parts bin Microsoft thumbsticks that they pull out of the factory bin to create, you know, a $30 Xbox One controller. So uh, because of that, obviously, I, I and the you get some actually really bad long-term durability with those sticks. The A and B button, which get hit the most, get jammed up, uh, and then you have to take it apart and repair them. So honestly, I got to give, you know, like a 3 to the Elite 1 and 2 and like a 10 to the Wolverine. Next on to the bumpers. This has got to be a draw across the board. All the bumpers feel really good. Uh, as far as just feel, they feel really good. However, the Razer has much uh, more durable, I guess, bumpers. I've heard no issues of bumpers breaking, and I've heard uh, that's a major point of failure on the Elite 1. Uh, I haven't heard too much about that on the Elite 2, but I'm assuming uh, because I did take that, part, that controller apart on the channel, and it had virtually the same bumper system in there. Um, I would, you know, give like a six to the Elite 1 and 2 because they feel good, but there's a potential of them breaking. And then I would give the bumpers on the uh, Razer Wolverine about an eight. They could feel better. They could be a little bit more ergonomically sculpted, but hey, they last for you. As for triggers, I mean, this is a, this is a hard one. The triggers felt fantastic on all three of them. However, you have two-way trigger stops. So basically completely off and then about a 50 to 60% cutout. Uh, on the Elite 1 and the Razer Wolverine Ultimate, as where the Elite 2 does have three-way trigger stops, and at its most aggressive trigger stop setting, you are virtually getting about a 10 to 15% pull, which felt superb, absolutely superb. So I would give a 10 out of 10 to the Elite 2, uh, about a 6 out of 10 to the Razer, and the I would give about a 7 to the Razer Wolverine Ultimate, because the placement of the trigger stops, I think, is better than the Elite's. Uh, but it does does just have two-way trigger stops. If they had another mode of adjustment in there, I think it'd be it'd be up there. 
with or above the Elite uh, Elite 2. As for battery life, completely null and void because the razors are wired only, which can be a downside for some people. If you're using this strictly for PC, it doesn't matter because you're sitting right there in front of a monitor with your headset on. You're literally like three, four feet away. But since this is for Xbox as well, a lot of casual console players, they want to be sitting in their couch or sitting, uh, laying back in their bed, and you don't always want to be wrapped up in some cable. If you have kids or pets, it's even worse. They can trip on the damn thing and fuck your shit up, and then you got to beat the hell out of them. Just unnecessary. Um, not to mention, I mean, it's only a 10-foot cord, which sounds like a lot, but depending on how far you, away, you are away from your TV, if you have a big old monster TV and you're about... You know, your couch is about 15 feet away or something. You will need to get an extension cable. I will have that linked in the description below. It adds zero latency or lag, but it basically extends it from 10 to 20 feet, which is great. Now, as for the paddles, this is very important on a premium controller. The paddles on the Elite One, they work, but they're very intrusive, especially the bottom two ones. They stick out really far, so you can accidentally actuate them, get false positives, you know, when you're hitting them and you don't want to be. Uh, and that was a huge downside. I don't think they're the worst paddle design that I've ever used. I think that goes to some of the modern scuff controllers like the Vantage. Um, I, I think those that paddle system is absolutely garbage. I have video reviews of all the scuffs, the Vantage, the Impact, and I think a couple other ones. i just not a fan of scuff's paddle system. But uh, yeah, they're not the worst things in the world. The Elite 2, they did shave them down a little bit and also push them in towards the shell more, so they are a better design. However, the R&D team that worked on the paddles for the, uh, the uh, Wolverine Ultimate are fucking geniuses. Between that and the mechanical face buttons, those two selling points make this one of my favorite premium controllers for PC and Xbox, hands down. It is, in my opinion, probably the best paddle system for, um, for Xbox and PC. Here's why. When you're gripping the controller normally, they're completely up and out of the way. They are literally out of the way where you don't even feel like you have paddles on there. So if you're playing a game like Crash Bandicoot or something where you don't need paddles, you're not manipulating the camera, you're just running around, jumping, spinning and shit, you're good to go. But as soon as you extend your fingers like that, you can cover all four paddles effortlessly to where they are completely reachable. And then when you don't need them, which is great because they're not removable, you just move your hands out of the way and it's like they're not there. So, I mean, Goddamn, bravo, Razer, bravo. So I would give the paddles on the Razer Wolverine a uh, 10 out of 10. They're they're fantastic. I also think they look really good. They have this like kind of brushed al brushed aluminum design on there. They look really good. For some reason, my, there we go. I got this brushed aluminum design. They look phenomenal. Um, the Elite One, I mean, it's they're just too big and bulky and they kind of get in the way. So I'd give those about a four, but they're not the worst like the Scuff. Uh, and then for the uh, Elite 2, I'd give them about a 6. They still have the same shape, but they've been shaved down a little bit. And uh, they are removable, too. Those are magnetized on the Elite 1, too, so you can take them off if you're not needing them. All right, so as for additional features, now you have onboard profiles on all three of these. However, with the Razer Wolverine, you can uh, remap on the fly, which is really kick-ass. You don't have to go into the uh, Razer app or anything. The app is available on both Windows 10 and on Xbox. And uh, you, you have two profiles that you can switch through, which is pretty cool. One for a racer, one for a shooter, or if you have two people using the same controller, it's pretty nice. Uh, the Elite One, you have two onboard profiles you can switch through. However, uh, you do have to go in the Xbox app to set those up. So, you know, once you set them, it's not a huge deal, but you can't remap on the fly. And the Elite Two, you also cannot remap on the fly, but you do have three onboard profiles instead of the two, and it's now a button instead of a slider. So now the Elite Two added a feature that the Series One did not have, where you can actually map a button to where when you hold that down, all the other buttons uh, unlock a different feature. So you can have each button set up to be two different things. Uh, so much like a gaming keyboard, when you hold down like you know Tab or something like that, all the other buttons can become something else. Now, I don't know how usable that is for, like, shooters and shit, but if you're playing something like an MMO where you need a lot of, uh, you know, hotkeys set up for, like, potions and spells and stuff like that, then, you know, that might actually be a pretty good option. What I find a more useful thing for the kind of people that generally get paddle controllers are people that are into first-person shooters and stuff um, is the Agile and Focus features for the Razer Wolverine. By mapping those to two different buttons... Uh, Agile increases the speed of your right or left thumbstick. It doesn't make any sense to use it on the left because that's just movement. And then on the right, uh, if you're holding the stick just slightly and then you press that Agile button, it you know increases your 
your thumbstick sensitivity by a whole bunch. I don't think that's very useful uh, because you can just control that, modulate that with the right stick, but the uh, focus feature is pretty sick. It actually decreases your thumbstick sensitivity down to about 30%. So if you hold that down when you get a sniper rifle or you're aiming down the sights, uh, doing some very precise shots, it actually uh, can make you significantly more accurate. And I thought that was a really cool feature, definitely usable. Now with the Elite 2, you're getting about 40 hours of battery life, which is really good. I think you were only getting about 24 or so on the Elite 1. So that is a lot of wireless battery life. And that's, you know, definitely a perk, um, I think, if you're playing on console in a casual environment like a living room or bedroom, you probably want wireless. Um, at a PC, it doesn't really matter. There are three ways to play on the um, Elite 1 and 2. You've got Xbox Wireless, which is less latency than Bluetooth because it's like a direct 2.4 gigahertz connection or whatever. Um, damn, my lips are dry. Uh, then you also have uh, Bluetooth, so you can connect it to like a cell phone or something like that, or to your PC via Bluetooth, which is convenient. Uh, you do get a little bit of wireless lag with that, but it, honestly, most times it's not even noticeable. And then you can also play wired through a USB-C connection, which will give you that zero latency. So you can go wired like the Wolverine uh, is mandatory to be wired at all times. Finally, for more additional features, as if there wasn't enough with the Wolverine already, you now have a, uh, a box at the bottom of it, which controls your audio input. So you can mute your mic from there without having to reach up to your headphones or anything. You can instantly mute your mic from your controller, which is really awesome. You can also adjust the volume for your headphones from five different levels. So basically you just turn your volume at 100% inside the Xbox controls and then you know, you can adjust it on the fly from your controller. Uh, you can also switch your two profiles from there and uh, remap, which is really cool. And uh, I didn't notice any buzzing or any weird um, audio effects when I was using a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, but 90% of the time, I just use my wireless uh, Razer Nari Ultimates with both Xbox and uh, PC anyway. So I don't have to worry about another wire, not to mention a lot of times the onboard amplifier and controllers um, causes a little hum or buzz inside of uh, the microphone and people in your chat will complain about it and it is very annoying. So you also have RGB lighting inside of the uh, tournament and the ultimate, which is really cool. Uh, however, it's not controllable through the Razer Synapse 3 app, which is what all the other PC peripherals from Razer are controlled through, which I think is kind of dumb because that's a better application than the uh, very console centric uh, Razer Wolverine for Xbox is what they call it on the PC Microsoft Store and also on the Xbox and you know when you're using it on a PC you can't use your mouse or keyboard to adjust any of the settings you need to just sit there with the controller and remap stuff which isn't a huge deal but the the kind of big deal is you can't coordinate any of your lighting effects with the rest of your Razer products so if you have a Razer keyboard headphone mouse um, they make a bunch of other things that have RGB built in like uh, a mouse bungee and a headphone stand and stuff like that and even like some of their full-size mouse pads have an rgb light around the outside you can coordinate all those to be you know doing some really cool lighting effects together uh, but because the app is a standalone for the controller you can't do that you can turn off the rgb completely and there's also seven different lighting modes for the controller which is really cool i mean rgb is not a huge deal but it is just a nice little cosmetic flair to have your controller whipping through the spectrum when people come over so all in all, my final conclusion, you know, three things that make a good gaming peripheral, whether it's a keyboard, headset, uh, controller. The first one is software integration. So how good does the software suite make use of the hardware? Uh, honestly, with all three of these, I think it's very, very good. I think they're all on par with each other. They all make sure that you can utilize the effect, the, uh, the, um, features of the controller pretty easily. Um, it's very easy to navigate these. They're pretty good software. Um, on both the Windows 10 and on Xbox, so that's good. Uh, the next one would be uh, ergonomic. So how does it feel on your head, in your hands, whatever peripheral we're talking about here. In this case, they're all based solely on an Xbox One controller design, which in my opinion is one of the greatest uh, ergonomic controllers out there for most average size hands that will fit your hand really well. I do think the ergonomics are better on the Razer Wolverine due to those kick-ass paddles that are up and out of the way when you don't need them. And the fact that uh, the ones are just, they're very intrusive on the Elite One. 
Um, and they're a little bit better on the Elite too, I guess. And then third uh, is going to be long-term reliability slash durability. How long are these things gonna last for you under heavy use? Because you're paying a premium price, you don't want these to break after a couple months. And that's where these start to differ a lot. The Razer Wolverine has had no issues that I've heard of, and I've searched forums and stuff. I haven't heard any complaints about the Razers, as were the Elite 1 and 2, especially the Elite 1, but even the 2 has many issues as well. Uh, they just they don't last um, they're breaking for a lot of people and you have a very limited warranty window I think it's like one year or something like that for the uh, manufacturer warranty and You know still even then you got to pay for shipping sometimes or even if they do pay for shipping because you are still fully in warranty You have to wait like, you know Seven to 14 days to get your controller back before you can play with your elite controller and that just sucks, too so, you know between that and then the paddles being so much better on the Razer and the mechanical face buttons the rgb is a cool touch being able to control your audio from the from the um that little onboard brick and everything oh god damn I, I gotta give it to the razor and then i would say the elite two and then the elite one um but honestly i can't personally recommend an elite right now unless you can get a very very good deal on them just because you know who knows how long they're actually going to last for you and that's a huge deal when you're paying a premium price for a premium controller so I would recommend the Razer Wolverine Ultimate. If you don't need four paddles, uh, you do still have two additional button buttons on the top. I forgot to mention these, but the uh, Razer Tournament and Ultimate, they have uh, two additional buttons on the top here, which are in a great position. You have your triggers, then your bumpers, and then right in between you have these mechanical switches. So you're actually getting six additional buttons. Uh, you're only getting two paddles on the tournament, and that's totally fine. If you can deal with just Two, two extra bumpers and two extra paddles, and you don't need the RGB, the swappable thumbsticks and D-pad, and the audio controls. Um, oh, and the, the remap ability on the fly, because so you only have one onboard profile. Then the tournament's a good option. It's about 40 bucks cheaper than the Ultimate. However, they both have a significant price drop that happened recently, so I'll have links to these in the description below, all these controllers, but I think the uh, tournament can be had for about... 80 to 100 bucks, which is really good because the Power A Fusion Pro, which I think is a real stinky piece of crap, um, that's another controller I reviewed, by the way. That's 80 bucks. And if you can get this for $80 a tournament, fuck yeah, get that. Uh, and then the uh, Razer Wolverine Ultimate, uh, I believe, is about 120 to $140, depending on what sales are running and uh, what outlet you buy it from. I always recommend Amazon because if you don't like a product within 30 days, doesn't matter if it's defective or not. You can get your money back. No questions asked. Uh, not to mention they ship out in two days. And I mean, they're the largest online re retailer for a reason. They do things right over there. So uh, yeah, that's going to do it, guys. I just, between the long-term reliability and then the fact that, man, the, those mechanical face buttons and a lot of the other little features like focus and, and agile that they throw into the, uh, they bake into the the wolverines i just i think they're a better controller and i think razer is a better controller than microsoft when it comes to peripherals now obviously razer doesn't make consoles they do make gaming pcs and laptops and shit like that but you know microsoft should kind of stay in its lane i understand they wanted to make a first party accessory from them for specifically for their console but it's just a whole hell of a lot better um over on the razer side so it's gonna do it guys peace